I inhale the exhale of trees, green breath in new orange light, silken filaments across my face and neck, ribbons from my eight-legged friends cheering me on for being the first to cross this path today. The cockatoo are upset, evicting the white ibis from their roost at the top of the casuarinas, and for a moment the sky is filled with two very distinct silhouettes and a cacophony of sound from those noisy sulphur crests. Then all at once they settle together in spindly she-oak high branches, sagging under their weight, an agreement clearly reached. The outrageous mullet of the royal spoonbill sways as he shakes his head from side to side in the shallows, gorgeous gold eyebrows flashing in dawn's early light. A great egret stands close by, ready to catch anything else disturbed and missed. The currawong sings me back across the road and onto the path home. One foot in front of the other, I hear the eastern wattle bird, the swamp hen's high-pitched honk, the tiny bells of wrens, the core of the raven family. A magpie swoops angrily beside me, low to the ground, a snap of the beak, eyes set on chasing Indian miners away. The breeze from her determined wings brushes my arm. Everyone is nesting. Everyone is more alert. A flash of masked grey and a white-faced heron steps out of the marsh, wary but holding their ground, which is unusual and I'm grateful for a moment as we look into each other's eyes. Good morning, beautiful being. I see you. There are no bears or wolves, lions or tigers, antelope or bison, but there are birds, so many birds on my beautiful island home. I want to talk to them all. I want to fly with them all. I want to move my spoonbill through silt. I want to soar in the air and celebrate the expansion of my humanity. I let them sing me through all the thoughts. I let them sing me through all the feelings. I let them sing me through time and space. I let them sing me into hope. I've had a week of not looking at the news at all. Things have been hard enough in my own tiny family with my brother being in hospital. He's doing so well. Thank you for all of your well wishes. And I know that my heavy heart could not take any more on top. There's an undercurrent of hope lost. Do you feel it too? I think most of us feel this way, inundated constantly with sorrow and suffering and pain. It feels like we're at a crossroads globally in a big way. I found myself developing a subconscious habit that I've now turned into a very deliberate conscious one. Whenever I can see the sky, I look for flight and the freedom that birds sketch in the blue. Out my window of the studio, out the kitchen window, when walking through the windscreen, walking to and from the shops, any time I can glimpse the great expanse above my head, I turn my gaze upwards and look for birds. I listen too, but sight is my strongest sense for this, my ears mostly ensconced in urban noise. I had to have a bone scan for some pain in my hands and feet, and while in position for the scan, unable to move for ten minutes, I looked between the louvers of the radiology window and saw pelicans in the distance, rising in a spiral together on the thermals so high. I love watching them do this, knowing that the only reason for them to be there is the pure joy of giant wings, lifting an enormous belly and beak, the breath of trees holding them aloft even through gravity's pull freedom sketched in the blue. Watching the birds on my morning walk, watching birds anywhere I can see the sky, they give me hope. And I realise that that is also the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. With pigment and words I make art, I talk about art, and I teach about being conscious, compassionate, curious, cre courageous, creative, because it's the only way that I can hold on to hope. Hope can't come from multinational corporations and big whatever oil farmer government. Hope comes from relationships with each other. Hope comes from art, and the solution is always creativity. Hope comes from relationships with each other and with the wild world we're a part of, even as we destroy and ignore. Hope comes from art, be they words, painting, sewing, storytelling, cooking, loving. The solution is always creativity, it is 
making with beauty and reciprocity and curiosity and rejecting the instantly replaceable throw away tear it down philosophy that we seem to be inundated with these days i do what i do for my own hope and i hope i really hope it helps give you hope too